Hey everybody, welcome back inside the Stash Book from the Stash Project. This is going to be our September compilation video uh, for all the new folks to the channel. First of all, welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, we do these videos at the beginning of every month, give you an idea of the expected kit releases for the given month, this being September of 2018. Uh, we have a pretty decent selection of things out of round two this month where, uh, you know, they've been doing one or two releases. They're sort of doing a little bit of a catch-up here, of course, nothing uh, spectacularly new because, well, round two doesn't really do that, but uh, a, a number of kits uh, that you may uh, in, be looking for or not. Uh, then we have just your overseas stuff. There's, uh, you know, we're still at that stage where uh, the distribution for the Ravel here in the United States probably will be coming online sort of by the end of the month, beginning of October. Uh, from what we understand, the kits are being shipped out to uh, the front line distrib distribution, uh, you know, sort of after the Labor Day holiday. Uh, and then it'll take probably another week or two for them to filter down into uh, your local hobby shop or your online vendor of choice. Uh, you know, just because everything has to be inventoried and sorted out and then repacked into new boxes. Nobody's ordering, you know, entire cases uh, of any of the products. I'm talking to one of our local hobby shop guys here. At least what is in the initial batch of kits, uh, aside from the uh, new things, sort of like the grease... Uh, 48 Ford, which has, you know, the couple pieces in it to make it resemble the movie car. Uh, none of the reissues or restocks are anything that my local hobby shop had actually run out of yet. So the stuff that's coming right now uh, will certainly restock certain places, but depending on how well stocked your hobby shop was, uh, you may not notice, uh, you know, the, the first wave of, uh, you know, of restocking kits that are going to be coming out in the end of this month. So uh, that being said, let's just plow on into it here. Uh, round two's got kits coming out of both the under the AMT label and the MPC label. We'll do MPC first. It's just there's like two things there. Uh, you're gonna get a reissue of, and I'm gonna say the venerable at this point because this kit was uh, you know old when I built it the first time around, and that is a reissue of the. Uh, I believe it's supposed to be a 1978 Dodge Monaco. Uh, this is going to be the Joker Goon car, uh, the Gotham City Police car, and then you could just build it as a Dodge Monaco. So they're billing it as a three-in-one. Uh, the little tag for this that makes it different than any past release of the kit is it's going to have a 125th scale resin Joker included with it. So that does have a figure with it, which has never been included in the kit before. Uh, it's supposed to have updated decals for... Uh, the Joker Goon Car. Now, personally, I've always found this a, an annoying way to issue this kit because neither the Joker's actual car nor any of the police vehicles for Gotham City in the 1989 Batman movie were actually Dodge Monaco's. So it was, you know, uh, a use of a, you know, tooling that existed, but it wasn't an accurate you know, depiction, even it within the confines of what it was supposed to look like. Not only was it not the right car, but it also uh, didn't look like the movie thing. So it'd be interesting to see what the decals are there. But, uh, you know, that kit has obviously been around uh, since the late 1970s. It was the end of the Dodge Monaco uh, reissues as far as, you know, being an annual kit. So, uh, you know, if you've seen it once, you've seen it a thousand times. The only sort of perk to it, again, would be the resin uh, figure if you're into that Batman thing. If you're not, uh, it's been a little while since that kit's been re released that I can think of, but uh, otherwise, no new parts or anything. And the other NPC release is going to be the 118th scale uh, Hydro V boat. Now, there's not a whole hell of a lot of parts to it. Uh, you know, it's sort of maybe 20 parts to the boat. Uh, it was a two-piece engine. We understand it does still have a Chrysler uh, logo on it, so that's kind of interesting. They kept that, as opposed to just sort of making it, uh, you know, a engine without an actual brand name. I don't think the brand name is referenced on the box art anywhere, but from what I understand, for people who've seen the actual, uh, actually, I believe the guy who built the test shot, that the engraving is still there. It is the first time in 50 years that this kit has been available. So, uh, you know, you're you're once again going back into. Uh, the 1960s being the last time this kit was released. Uh, round 2. Now, obviously, Round 2, within the confines of the entire auto world scheme, 
has a number of die casts. And so what they're pushing with this boat is the fact that it's 118 scale, so it will be suitable for display with your die cast models. Now, if you don't happen to have any die cast models, I don't know what to tell you. I personally, I think I have one 118 scale uh, die cast, and that's a, one of the old UT models, uh, Chevy Caprices, which I'm pretty sure couldn't actually tow this boat with the hitch rating that a Caprice would have, but be that as it may, it's, it's an option for you, I guess. But again, I, I, I do find that when round two does reissue things, these are the things that while I would not buy one of these Hydro V boats, because what would I do with it personally? I do find that to be the interesting thing they could do when they're taking something that has not been seen for 50 plus years and bringing it back. That's sort of uh, really where their niche of you know doing that sort of thing really appeals to me. Uh, and then over at AMT, you have a number of uh, reissues here. They're going to reissue what they're calling the Piranha Drag Team. Now, this is going to be a, I should mention the 118 scale boat does come with a trailer. The Drag Team is going to be sort of a three kits and one boxing. I expect a price therein. It's, uh, I think the retail on it's like 63 bucks. so look for probably being in the low to mid-50s in a hobby shop that doesn't dictate the MSRP. And it's going to have the Piranha Drag Car which will, if you don't want to buy the entire kit, the Piranha Drag Car will be getting its own re uh, release before the end of the year, but it's going to have the Piranha Drag Car, the trailer, and the sort of the Piranha, you know, show car, the Man from Uncle car, or whatever you want to look at it. I think it was just the spy car, right, this last reissue because they didn't want to pay for the licensing for the TV show. Uh, but those three things, we had an interesting little debate online a few days ago about whether or not we thought the Piranha... Uh, show car could pull the Piranha uh, Hemi Dragster, and I said, well, once you got the trailer moving, pulling it would not be a problem, minus the hills, because the Piranha uh, show car's Corvair power would be uh, stopping, you know, the, the Hemi uh, car with the trailer is obviously going to be a great deal heavier than the show car, and would probably be a very, very messy stop, particularly any emergency stop, but be that as it may, it's a, you know, fun little thing, I guess. Uh, they're going to reissue, and this is not a giant surprise based on the NBC thing, right? The 1989 Batmobile uh, from the movie, and this is going to come with a resin 125th scale Batman figure. So if you bought them both, I guess you'd have sort of a, a little bit a set. Uh, they're not being sold as obviously one boxing, although, I mean, I don't know for anything about them, but it wouldn't necessarily surprise me if they would, but there's nothing in the future that says they are, just, uh, you know, it would not shock me. <laughs> Let's put it that way. The way round two uh, reboxed everything. I mean, if you're going to offer the Piranha Drag Team and then offer the, but you could buy all three pieces of those of the things separately. I, you know, who knows? The same 1989 Batmobile has always been wasn't a bad kit. Um, I think we probably all recognize it better as being, uh, you know, kit number six. What is it, 6078? When uh, Scale Out Enthusiasts back in the day tried to run a, a a design contest based on this car and then. Uh, Warner Brothers wouldn't let them use the Batman name, so they had to just use the kit's number. So that's coming back. Uh, they're going to reissue the, the Plymouth Prowler. Uh, if people who don't remember, AMT, Ertl, back in the late 1990s, did a snap-type version of this kit, so that's what this is. It says it's going to be molded in four colors, so this is sort of one of those don't have to paint it if you don't want to. I assume the four colors are like a black, a dark gray, perhaps a light gray, and purple, because, you know, every Plymouth Prowler ever not really, but ever, was always in purple. So I'm assuming there's a purple body. Uh, the There were a, a number of um, the bumpers and things like that were sort of a very dark gray, sort of a, a graphite, or there's a word just rolling around there that just left my mind before I could say it. But uh, And then a light gray for the interior, and then like a black for the chassis perhaps. Um, but, you know, if, if you're interested in that, that's something else. Um, it's one of those things where it's like... Ah, you know, Ravel did a whole glue kit with a that was full detail and had a trailer, but this would be a weekend build, I guess. You know, there's always that. Uh, they're going to reissue the 132nd scale 1963 Corvette. So this is another one of the uh, you know slot car type uh, releases. They've done three or four of the 132nd scale, what they were known as the All Star kits back in the day. I can't remember what the, what the branding is on them right now off the top of my head, but it's something similar, uh, like Scale Stars or something like that. Uh, so that, that kit does have some chrome pieces in it if, if you wanted to build it as that way, but, you know, I, again, you're really playing on the nostalgia uh, strings at that point, releasing these odd scale, uh, you know, 
sort of cars that were basically designed to be slot cars, but are also very, very basic curbside model kits at the same time. Uh, but if, if you're a collector and you wanted to get, you know, collect them all, this is another one of those that are going to be coming out. And then they've got two uh, pieces of uh, heavy truck equipment coming out. One will be the Great Dane Extendable Flatbed, uh, a venerable kit from the 1970s. Uh, nothing new about it other than the fact that they are adding what they're calling wide load signs. Uh, I certainly hope it doesn't say wide load because based on an over, based on an extendable flatbed, uh, you're not hauling an, a wide load, you're hauling an oversized load. You're hauling something that's very, very long, not something that's wide. That trailer's not designed to pull anything that will be sticking off both sides of it. It's designed to pull uh, a bridge beam, which I believe is what is in this, uh, you know, or a giant cement, I guess it's actually technically a giant cement beam uh, that's you know, comes with this kit. That's not wide, that's oversized. <laughs> and, and I know that's sort of picking nits, but, you know, that's what I do for a living, so. And not the picking nits, but driving the truck. So, to me, putting a wide load sign on that would just be confusing, because it's not wide, it's long. It's overdimensional, not wide. So, uh, you know, your mileage may vary as whether or not you care. And then the other thing will be the Peerless Logging Trailer. Uh, same thing, uh, another one of the 1970s trailers. Uh, you are going to get the logs or the, or the steel beams, uh, architectural beams in that, uh, as far as the load goes. And that wraps up the stuff from round two. So a few things, interesting things there. Obviously they've reissued a plethora of the trucks. So some more trailers for the trucks, always a good thing. Uh, I personally would love to see some more modern stuff, but it is what it is. But that takes us, like I said, overseas, just a few uh, things out of a couple companies, and then Aoshi has got their giant uh, restock list, which will be interesting to see how many of these things actually get uh, announced or, uh, you know, come in. Uh, if you sit around and you were, were to look at my notebook of knowledge, as it comes in, you would see that there are a great many of these Aoshima kits don't have check marks next to them because when they're restocked, they don't really, you know, make a big deal out of the fact that they're restocked. It just goes in, and if you were shopping one day, the kit would be out of stock. If you went shopping the next day, the kit would be there. So, uh, you know, we just tell you in case you missed something and you want to be able to try to go get it. But as far as, you know, coming up on the weekly video and being like, oh, look, this kit's been reissued. A lot of the stuff we don't do that with. If you stay with us for a long time, uh, a lot of the stuff we talk about in those just restock things don't ever really reappear. You just sort of got to remember, which is why we do the monthly videos. So at Fujimi, uh, I got two uh, releases for the month of September. One is going to be their 120th scale McLaren MP46. That is an 1891 F1 season car that can be built as either the uh, Japanese or the San Marino uh, Grand Prix. Not a lot I can tell you about that because I don't build F1, but usually most of the Fujimi kits, especially from that age, are full detail. And then they are going to be uh, releasing the second version of the Toyota Alford. That is the brand new version, uh, if you will, of the Velfire van. It has the new front end on it. We just talked about this being released a few weeks ago in metallic white. So this is going to be released in black. Uh, remember, these next-gen kits that they're doing, or just the next kits, are designed to be... They're snap tight kits, and they're designed not to be painted. They've got the Mylar stickers, but they do have a very small sheet of water slide decals, and as well for uh, scripting and dash gauges, things like that, so that you can make the choice, conscious decision to paint the things you want to paint, rather than using the Mylar press on stickers. Uh, I don't really see a point in buying the black one when the white one is available, uh, just for the simple fact, unless you want to paint one black, you know, it's, it's it's always that thing where it's not hard to cover black, but anything you, you, you paint under a black base, it's always the color's going to be a little darker than it would be, obviously, starting from a white car. Over at BMAX, they're going to uh, be releasing their one modified reissue for the fall that we know about so far, and that is the 1991 Japanese Touring Car Championship season, Itamitsu Motion, Honda Civic EF9. Now, uh, unless you really pay attention to your Hondas, that may be meaningless to you, but the original kit and the subsequent re uh, reissue of it, which was the Pia livery, the white car, and then they did the modal livery that has a two-in-one because it has the 88 and the 89 season decals in it. The EF9 is going to have several new parts, uh, prom most prominently a new hood, a new front and rear bumpers, as well as, I believe, a new muffler system, or at least a new racing exhaust system. Uh... Also going to have new uh, headlight buckets, new headlight glass, and things like that. And this will effectively update the car from 19, 1988 spec to 1991 spec. The real car had a mild refresh uh, in in its you know EF generation, and that's what this kit will represent. There's also going to be uh, a photo etch set for it as well. 
and it does appear, at least from looking at the photo I set in this version, doesn't include carbon fiber decals, whereas I believe, if I if I look back, the 89 kit's photo watch does have like a wrap for the seat. So, uh, maybe they're just not showing it yet. The, the Supposedly the kit and the decals are out in China, but the pictures uh, on like Hobby Easy aren't necessarily the clearest, and they don't really go into the box content the way Hobby Search does. So, uh, we may have to wait till later this month when this actually is released in uh, Japan to get a really good look at the contents, especially of the photo etch set. Over at Hasegawa, uh, quite a few things coming back out here. Uh, reissue of their 124th scale F1 car for the 1990 season, the Williams FW14B. Uh, or excuse me, that's the 1991 season. There's going to be several things here, and they have dates written to them. Read, read the wrong one. So Williams FW14B, 1991. Uh, most likely a situation, again, where you're going to have to uh, get some aftermarket decals to replace some of the livery. Uh, they're also going to reissue their 1990 season. Uh, 124 scale Lola T9050 F3000 car. Uh, that was a support series to, uh, I believe, the Japanese touring car back in the day. Uh, that would have been a little bit before it became a uh, Japanese Grand Touring Championship. This is going to have the cabin livery, which is kind of odd. We've only seen a few times where Hasegawa has actually released the livery for a tobacco uh, liv sponsorship. The other one being the uh, Jaguar XJs that have the silk cut livery in them, even though they don't mention it on the box art. This one is very blatantly mentioning the cabin thing on the box art, to the point where it's part of the description name of the kit. So... Uh, I guess at least you won't have to go fishing for reproduction decals there. Most likely because I don't think anyone's ever done any aftermarket support for the F3000 kits, of which there are at least two. Uh, this will be the first one. They're going to reissue their uh, Porsche 962 C car, once again, uh, for the 1989 uh, Jost Blopunk uh, sponsorship. I believe it's a World Sports Car Prototype Series uh, racing series livery. Got to reissue the Subaru Legacy GT Touring Wagon. That's been reissued a couple of times here recently, uh, in the last uh, about 18 months or so since it got uh, reissued for the first time in a long time. Uh, they're going to reissue their Lancia Stratos Rally Car and the 1982 uh, Targa Florio Rally, and that is going to have, uh, I'm trying to see if I can even read my chicken scratch writing here, but uh, I know the, first, the, the young lady's first name. Uh, well, she's, uh, you know, older now, but at the time, the young lady's name was Isabella, and I can't not read my writing on the last part here, so you get uh, a, you'll have to just wait till the kit comes out until I can read it uh, correctly, because I'm not going to look it up on just this quick video, but uh, this was one of the first times that a uh, female rally driver had won a major uh, national rally. Now, the, the, you know, t the Target Flurry Rally was not part of, like, World Rally Championship, but it was a major Italian rally, and it was, again, one of the first times that a female driver had won a major rally like that. So, uh, a cool little, uh, I don't want to say tribute, but a cool uh, little piece of history there. Uh, they're going to reissue their Jaguar XJS uh, touring car, the, the uh, Tom Walkinshaw Racing uh, vehicle, which we have... You know, several sitting right here. And this is going to come with the 1982 European Touring Championship modal livery. The thing that we're looking for here, and by we I mean all of us, not we like I'm royal, is whether or not this kit is going to have uh, mesh BBS mesh wheels released with it. The kit as it comes does not. It's representing a 1984 season car, and the wheels are accurate for that kit as far as what the kit represents out of the box. But the 1982 decals, which are also done by Studio 27 for specifically the Silverstone race, and the 1983 modal livery cars, which are the white ones, uh, those cars had BBS uh, racing center lock wheels. And the, again, the, the kit as it comes does not. So hopefully, maybe they can borrow the, the wheels out of perhaps the, uh, the JTCC uh R31 uh, Skyline, maybe, 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 because they really don't have a set of center lock mesh wheels as it stands, but just releasing that kit with a new livery scheme without fixing the wheel problem, to me, is kind of chintzing out on it, and what we have seen out of Hasegawa, at least for the, like, the last two, two and a half years, is they really are going that extra step to make things uh, more correct. We've seen them put new suspension components under the 318i, new suspension components underneath the Honda Civics, both the uh, EF, uh, not the EF9, but the EG6, uh, three-door Civic, the Ferio Civic, 
the Toyota Corolla AE10111. All of those kits have, have had new parts tooled to lower them a little bit and make them more race car and less like a street car with racing decals on it, which is what they were, you know, sort of dual use back in the day. So very interested to see where that's going to go. I have one on pre-order. Uh, just basically to have the wheels more than anything else, and if I see this pop in and it doesn't have mesh wheels, then I am going to cancel the pre-order because I have enough of them as it is, uh, you know, and I can source wheels from Scale Productions or uh, somebody else, perhaps uh, Frank or SK, although those wheels might be a tad bit large uh, that were used on the E30 in, as in terms of their... Uh, both the width and the diameter. Probably could take them out of the Sierra kits, probably could take them out of the BMW 635 Tamiya kits, but they get the, then you get in a situation of where you're taking the wheels out of a rare, rare uh, kit. So very interesting to see what that's going to end up with. Uh, they're also going to be reissuing their Lancia, or their Lancia, their Lancer, Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 3 uh, in the 1996 Safari Rally livery, and the last kit out of Hasegawa will be a reissue of their Honda Civic. This one is going to be uh, normally what is known as an SC1 uh, in the GL trim level. Now, this is going to take the Honda Civic and forward date it to, uh, I believe, 1978. There will be several new pieces, mostly for front end and rear end trim pieces. Uh, I believe a couple of interior pieces that are different there as well to sort of take this right up to the edge of the first, or uh, well, not the first, but the edge of the, I guess it is the edge of the, yeah, it would be the first. So the edge of the first gen Civic. Uh, this kit could probably turn into a second gen Civic without really a whole heck of a lot of uh, work done by Hasegawa in terms of, you know, uh, chassis and interior things. The body would need to be different, but uh, I believe a lot of that probably could be taken care of with mold insert rather than a whole new body mold. Uh, but it'd be interesting. It's another version of the Civic. It'll be the third kit after the uh, original kit and the racing one. And uh, that takes us over to Aoshima, where we're going to uh, do a couple more of the more grand champion uh, kits. And I believe these are actually going to be the first of them diving back into that series. Yes, it'll be the first ones. And that is going to be uh, the Ken and Mary 1980s uh, two door Nissan Skyline and the Toyota Mark II X41. The X41 has been reissued both as a street car and with its uh, Grand Champion boxing. And this was, of course, the next series that came after called More Grand Champions, for which I believe there are 16 uh, kits, at least 12 regular ones, and then they did uh, four what they were called special kits. So we'll be interested to see if we get the special ones back or we just get the straight 12. But anyway, we're starting off with the first two of those. Then in the model car lineup, we get a reissue of the 1992 Y32 Nissan Cedric Nissan Gloria Gran Turismo. Uh, these kits in real life were very, very similar. This will not be a two-body uh, style release like some things are. Both kits use the same body, just some front and rear trim and, and uh, wheels and things like that were different. Be interesting to see if they include the photo watch with this. The original kits that were done in 1992. I have some of the original ones of these uh, because I never believed these kits would be reissued. Because at this point, I mean, you're talking about them being, uh, you know, what 27 years old, 26 years old. I didn't think we would see them back ever again. Uh, so I bought some original ones, which for not for a bad price or anything. But the original ones do have like little photo etch, little little sheet of photo etch uh, for the scripts and things like that. So be interesting to see if they do. Uh, reissue this kit with, with basically what amounts to two photo etch uh, things in there because obviously there's a Cedric and there's a Gloria and the scripts would be different for those. They're going to reissue their 1993 Toyota Chaser slash Cresta. Uh, the Chaser can be built as a Chaser Tour 5. The Cresta can be built as either an Avante or a Super Lucent. Uh, this will be more than likely a two body uh, kit just because the Chaser and the Cresta are different enough that I'm not sure that you can pull off uh, the same body for both. It will have the same, you know, it'll be one of these situations where you have to pick one or the other. There's not going to be two whole kits, uh, but, you know, the guts and the most of the interior will be all the same, but the bodies, I believe, are uh, are different enough to, re to warrant there being two bodies, because one is a uh, sedan and one is a hard top, a pillarless hard top, so unless they have you cut the pillars off, which could be, uh, that I believe there's two bodies with those. And then the last of the model car uh, kits will be a reissue of their 1994 Nissan Skyline R33 GTS 25 Turbo Type M. Lots of numbers and names there for what amounts to a four-door uh, R33. So 
this is a curbside kit based in the, uh, I want to say, late 1980s, early 1990s. But there does it does include an engine insert and probably more than likely a will have a regular hood and a clear hood because that was the way they did things back then. Uh, you would have to cut the hood off of the model kit itself because it's not molded separately, and then you would either be, you would either get a just a, uh, an injected molded hood that were to replace it, or you would get a clear hood. And some releases have had both. The idea with a clear hood was to show off the engine, not just to give you a hood. So. Uh, if it just comes with a clear hood, keep in mind you do have to prime that. You can't just, for the most cases, unless you're spraying like an acrylic, uh, you can't spray clear plastic with a lacquer-based paint. You'll uh, eat the paint, eat the plastic a little bit. Clear plastic's not made out of the same type of uh, exact same formulation, I should say, a plastic that obviously just your regular styrene bodies are. So you do want to take the care there to not ruin the hood if it's the only replacement hood. And then a number of kits here, like I said, being reissued into the restock. So nothing new about these. These are just being uh, put back into stores, places that, uh, you know, uh, basically meant Aoshima was out of these kits and they had to make more so they would have some to distribute down the line. 2014 Nissan GTR Pure Edition, 1973 Nissan Skyline GTR, 1974 Nissan Skyline 2000 GTX, 1981 Toyota Soar MZ11, that's the one we just showed you a few weeks ago with the uh, What's in the Box uh, video, the first gen Soar. Uh, the Austin FX4 London Cab. Not a big fan of that I make it. You know, we've talked about that a, uh, you know, a number of times. It's not really 124 scale, it's more like 122nd and a half or something like that. Uh, 2002 Mazda RX-7 Spirit R Type B. So that's the you know mildly modified reissue that uh, had actually no real parts added to it, just a bunch of parts from various sources taken into a box to create uh, with a new set of decals to create a different version of the kit. Uh, that was just as I said released what five six months ago, so they've run out of that. Uh, reissue of the 78 Mitsubishi Galant, reissue of the 1998 Toyota Chaser Tour 5 uh, Cunny Z, that is, of course, the old Drift Grand Prix kit. Uh, reissue of the 2001 Nissan R34 Skyline Eurace. Uh, that, again, is another D1 Grand Prix car. Uh, well, as mentioned when it comes up, the, the D1 Grand Prix cars are reissued constantly. A lot of people say, well, the D1 Grand Prix cars are so rare. The D1 Grand Prix kits themselves, the ones that actually represent the D1 Grand Prix, which is a drift series, if you don't know what a D1 is. The drifts cars, yes, those are rare in the sense that they have not reissued those uh, specifically like that, with the liveries they had in the drift series. But the kits themselves, the base kits, have been reissued a bunch of times. So, you know, the Tour 5 Cunny Z and the, and the R34 Skyline Eurace have been reissued four, five times in the last four or five years. Seems like they get it reissued about once every 18, well, not even 18 months, once about every uh, 10, 11 months or so. And, you know, I th both of those, of course, were just put into the new tuned Monte Car line uh, boxings as well, but they're they're constant. Those kits are available. You would just have to source decals for them, because more than likely the decals are shot after you know 18 years at this point of those original kits, which makes the always makes it interesting when you buy. I don't know, tangent time. I'll well, we buy an original kit that's very decal intensive because chances are the decals aren't any good anymore. And so you've paid a lot of money for a kit that exists in these other versions, but the only thing of value in those kits will be the decals, which aren't any good anymore. So, you know, irony. Anyway, back to the list. Uh, reissue of the 1985 Toyota Hilux Custom. That'll be the low rider. Reissue of the 1998 Toyota Chaser Toyota Racing Development Kit. Uh, reissue of the 20-inch BBS LM and Work Schwartz SC4 wheels. Reissue of the 19-inch Volk TE37 and CE28N wheels. Reissue of the 14-inch Kaku Tekken and Formula Mesh wheels. Reissue of the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento. Reissue of the Lamborghini Aventador 50th Anniversario. And then a couple of the Grand Champion kits, which were released earlier this year, getting another run, are the Skyline 2000 GTX and the Mark II Grande. And then we get the uh, Kit Season 3 and the Kit Super Pursuit Mode uh, versions of those uh, movie cars that uh, Aoshima did a series of, I believe, five. I believe there are Seasons 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then there is the uh, car, the you know, evil version of Kit. 
Uh, the car has not been released for a while. V3 and the Super Performance, Super Pursuit mode have not been released for a while either. So at this point, the car is the only one that has to be uh, reissued to sort of complete the set because uh, the Season 1 and Season 4 were reissued back in July. So guys, there's how you're spending your money for the month of September. Uh, it is Labor Day weekend down here in the uh, U.S., so I hope you guys have a great three-day weekend. Enjoy your holiday. Uh, get some bench time in if you can. I know for a lot of people this is a vacation week or, uh, you know, your kids are off school and things like that, so getting bench time doesn't necessarily come into effect, but if you can you know, sneak some in there, uh, go ahead and grab some, and, and hopefully you have a, have a good time with it. So hope you enjoyed it. See you guys on the other side.